Radio Giant has or is signing off this morning after a legendary career. 70-year-old Tom Joyner is the host of America's number one syndicated urban morning show. The Tom Joyner Morning Show airs in more than 105 markets nationwide, reaching nearly 8 million listeners. Well, today at 10 a.m. Eastern, the show goes off the air. Unbelievable. Jerika Duncan. Jerika Duncan's here. She traveled to Hollywood, Florida to meet the hardest working man <laughs> in radio. Jerika, how does it feel about hanging up the mic? Well, you know, it's bittersweet for Tom Joyner. This is a man who admits he has made a lot of money in radio, but he has also raised a lot of money to support historically black colleges, more than $60 million to be exact. It's clear Joyner loves his job, and he loves the listeners who have been supporting him for the last 25 years. Time for the celebrities. Tom Joyner keeps his listeners that? laughing Hugging. and learning. Barbara Hillary, the first black woman to stand on both the North and South Poles. Our thing has always been to empower people, but to empower, we have to first entertain. If I've got you laughing, I've got you listening. His nationally syndicated Woo! radio show hit the airwaves in 1994 with a certain audience in mind. We do a show for, for African Americans. That's what we do. This is just so fascinating. In 2000, Joyner discussed his influence so, with 60 Minutes correspondent so Leslie Stahl. 1996, the election. Yeah. I've heard that you were responsible for registering a quarter of a million black voters. I've been given that credit. Politicians, they mm -hmm. call you? Oh, they yeah. want to come on? Yeah. They think that if they want to reach African Americans that vote, they, the come, they can come to this show. How does the message that you were talking about in 2000 resonate with 2019 mm. as we go into the 2020 election? It was different then. I think we're more woke then than now. In 2000? In 2000. What day is it? Joyner says super serving the African American community has been the secret to his success. Don't worry about crossover. Just super serve, super serve, super serve. Anything that affects African Americans, that's what you do. Just worry about connecting to people and their needs. He was born and raised in Tuskegee, Alabama, one of many cities that helped shape the civil rights movement. I was a fat kid and they served great food at civil rights marches. <laughs> oh my God, the chicken was good. And <laughs> so I'm out there protesting the fact that our radio station in this all black town didn't play any black music. And this guy who owned the radio station, which was inside a Ford dealership, came out and said, I don't need this. I'm trying to really sell some cars. Tell you what, it's a sun up to sundown station. Every Saturday, I'll let one of you play all the Aretha and the Temptations that you want. That's how it started. That's how it started. By the mid-1980s, Joyner earned the nickname Fly Jock. That's because he was offered two jobs and took both, flying between Dallas, where he did a morning show, and Chicago, where he was on air in the afternoons. How did you do that for eight years, though? Greed. <laughs> Greed. Celebrities, including Oprah Winfrey, have been calling in to congratulate Joyner on his retirement. Congratulations. Oh. I mean, the world's not going to be the same without you two. Sybil Wilkes co-hosts the show with Joyner from Dallas. The Tom Joyner Morning Show has been a lifeline for a lot of people who are going through their day-to-day, -day, but it has empowered them. It's entertained. Skip gates. Entertainment and empowerment mm -hmm. have paid off. At and his peak, did, Joyner says he was making $14 million uh, a year. The, uh, but it got to the point where they were, all right, you're going to cut your salary in half, okay. And then in half, okay. And then in half, two years ago, because my salary was based on my results. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, uh, not only was I losing affiliates, but radio industry as a whole was losing traction. If you had been offered more money, would you have stayed longer? Heck yeah. 
Shoot, I, my goal was to die on the radio, have my funeral on the radio. What's the next chapter? I'm just going to be concentrating on raising money and putting, putting it in the hands of college students to, to help their tuition uh, at historically black colleges. That's my goal. All after 12 noon. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't, you won't be waking up till after the noon hour. That's right. I'm not going to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Joyner's advice to his successor, Ricky Smiley, super serve the African-American community and community and continue to give back. You know, this is somebody that I grew up listening to mm -hmm. when yeah. I was in Cleveland and then again when I was in Philadelphia. Um, and I actually interned under one of his competitors. So we talked about that in the interview. Yeah. Um, but just a really phenomenal person who, again, is not shy about saying, yeah, I did make money, yeah. but I also gave a lot of money he back. Did. He, he yeah, sure did. He built an empire. Yeah, he and did. he's hit on so many different issues. I mean, he went through a great uh, weight loss and also a fitness uh, mm -hmm. period of his life, and he brought a lot of attention to that yeah. to a community that suffers from diabetes. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I love obesity. that super serve philosophy. That's what, yeah. Also, yeah. if you but, got him laughing, you got him listening. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. Good advice. But All right, I couldn't Trigga, commute thank... from Dallas to Chicago. That would kill me. <laughs> Trigga, thank you very much.